Good afternoon and welcome to CC Gurukul lecture. In today's session on symbolic expression, we have with us Ms. Manisha who is going to interpret the lecture in sign language. The topic for discussion today is Peter Berger, his contribution to sociology and in this lecture we are going to discuss his work Invitation to Sociology, a Humanistic Perspective. To let us understand how Peter Berger contributes to the development of a sociological perspective to understand society. So to start, Peter Ludwig Berger was an American sociologist and he is known for his work on sociology of knowledge, sociology of religion, study of modernization and also theoretical work to sociological theory. Now it is important to understand that Peter Berger's book An Invitation to Sociology was published at the same time that Sociological Imagination by C. Wright Mill was published. So it is important to understand that both of them were trying to explain the discipline of sociology and the role of sociologist. He is trying to understand how a sociologist studies social relation and the most important contribution in terms of understanding how human experiences everyday reality. So to keep in mind, sociology is a science of society. This is how our forefathers kind of visualized sociology. Now Peter Berger will kind of critique the classical sociologist perspective and takes sociology closer to humanities and therefore his perspective is humanistic. He kind of tells that sociology can be placed in the humanist tradition and therefore it is a peculiar modern thought. It is a unique way of critically understanding reality. We just do not go and look at things and come back with it. What appears to the eye needs to be interpreted and multiple meanings need to be explained. So for Berger, there are multiple layers of social reality. And what does a sociologist do? He or she tries to penetrate deep inside it. So his suggestion was that those who are kind of aware of afraid of too much of innovation or too much of discovery should stay away from sociology because it is a kind of a critical understanding of social reality. So what was the humanist tradition? According to Berger, a humanist perspective suggests sociology's ongoing communication with other disciplines that are concerned with explaining human behavior. So we know there are number of disciplines like psychology, political science, history that studies human behavior. Now what is significant is that these are not unrelated. All needs to be con of looking into the reality from a different perspective. Now sociology's contribution is that it will try to provide an integrated and holistic understanding. And sociology as a discipline is considered in terms of being close to humanities, literature, philosophy. The ultimate purpose is trying to free human society of illusion, of chaos and try to bring in a order. So he will give us a concept of ordered social reality. So in that context he is trying to say that society is full of kind of disorder, it is very complex. Now what are individual doing? are filtering the social reality and how do they do this? They do this by categorization and classification. So therefore, 
it becomes a particular social experience of an individual. Burjo explains that the humanistic perspective, he compares it human beings to puppets in a puppet theatre. So all of us have seen puppet show where someone is trying to pull the string and the puppets accordingly move. Now what is the difference between a puppet and a human being? Berger says that human beings are able to see the string that is moving them. They are able to critically examine the machinery that is helping them move, unlike a puppet. What does it imply? That seeing the movement of the string, we can modify our action according to our own understanding of the reality. So his focus is on understanding everyday social reality, how we experience it, how we give a different meaning to it in reference to our political, economic and other social situation. Therefore, for Berger, the vision of sociology is to help people move towards freedom. You know, that is why he is using the term humanistic. It is kind of more something which will free yourself. So, this perspective is kind of a little different from the earlier classical traditions where it was being argued that social reality is out there. You just need to give a understanding or an interpretation of it. Now, we are trying to understand that we need to construct social reality with reference to the meaning that we attach to it. So, sociology as a discipline can serve as a liberation, kind of provide freedom to individual and freedom from what? Freedom from illusion and freedom from chaos. So, by using our own mental capacity through communication, human beings are able to provide an order in society and the effort is to make society more human. So, this is one perspective in which he is placing sociology. The second way in which we interpret Berger's sociology is, he described sociological perspective as seeing the general in the particular. Now, general would be a common phenomena, something which affects everyone. Particular is which is happening at an individual level. Now, many of the time we consider our individual problem as an in our own problem and not able to relate it to the wider society. What Berger says is that a sociologist looks for a general pattern in the behavior of particular people. So, you have to kind of relate the micro with the macro. What is happening at an individual level has to be related at what is happening at the general level. So, every individual is unique. Every society shapes the life of people in various categories. So, such as age category, caste, class category, gender categories. Now, these categories will do what? Will influence our individual experience. So, I being born as a woman in a particular caste will affect the way in which I can experience everyday reality. So, we begin to see the world sociologically by realizing how the general categories in which we fall shape our particular life experiences. So, in that context, when we look at sociology as a humanistic perspective and as a general in particular, we try to understand that sociology is not limited to statistical measure. He is trying to say 
that sociology is not only about methods. Yes, statistics is important, data is very crucial for sociological research. But the task of a sociologist is not to kind of satisfy with data. What is required is to use that statistical data to explain reality. So, sociology is not limited to statistical measure of social processes on a set of abstract theory. Rather, it is a discipline that addresses social and human issues. It is a world view in itself. It is more than its method and it is not kind of limited to say data, survey or theory. It is kind of more about kind of a form of consciousness. He says in his book, The Invitation to Sociology, that sociology is a pas passion, you know. It is a passion to understand social reality, the way people experiences it. So, it is kind of science and its findings are found through observation of certain rules of evidence that allow people to repeat and continue to develop the finding. So, this is the most important contribution that he is doing in terms of understanding the methodology of sociology. Every sociologist, we do collect data, but that collect data needs to have evidence and it can be of use to other and also verified by others. That is the significance. So, the meaning derived from sociological research should be contextualized with historical, cultural, environmental and other important data. Such a perspective requires a person to observe a situ situation through objective eyes. You know, he is trying to make a relation between sociology and social values and he says that sociologist as a member of society will have several values, values related to membership of a particular community, religion, as citizen of a country and so on. So, he is not denying that we do not have values. What is important is that when we are doing a sociological study, it is important to keep in mind one important value and that value is of scientific integrity. Now, scientific integrity means that we have a methodological method of un, uh, doing research, collecting data, data that helps us to relate to the reality, it has evidence and it can be verified by others. So, the sociological perspective is more like a demon that possesses one, that drives one compelling again and again to the questions that are its own. So, an introduction to sociology is therefore an invitation to a very special kind of passion. In his book, he writes that this book, The Invitation to Sociology and Humanistic Perspective is not to be studied. It is a text to be read and it is not an attempt to arrive at theories, but rather an invitation to the intellectual world of sociology. So, the book Invitation to Sociology, he mentions that the first wisdom of sociology is things are not what they seem. As I already said that for Peter Berger, social reality has multiple layers and multiple layers with multiple meanings. The task of a sociologist is not to be deceived by what is appears to be. Rather, it needs to be, uh, the layers have to be uh, taken out one layer after the other and then try to provide a possible meaning 
of each layer and it can be deceptive in the beginning because what we see by with our eyes without any kind of evidence or any kind of data would be kind of an illusion so what we need to do is map out the reality that is being seen or hidden and connect it to the data that will verify the reality social reality has multiple layers what does this mean for a sociologist it implies that the sociologist has to critically reevaluate taken for granted assumption about the world that people usually presume are natural normal or the way things should be so the first time we see a reality or any social action by common sensical understanding we go by the average or what has been already existing but a social reality can be different from what is appears to be or what was taken for granted assumption and that is why he was trying to kind of provide evidence to the understanding that sociology has all often been mis assumed or has been misrepresented as something which deals with people as something which is kind of trying to do activities for the welfare of society and here it is important to differentiate sociology from social work most people assume sociology to be similar to social work peter berger clarifies that this might not always be true why he says social work is practice we do certain kind of activities which may be beneficial to a certain group most of the time social work is about practice that is they take up a problem and they try to find a solution to it so if in case there is a problem of gender violence a social work will try to provide a solution to gender equality in families in society how is sociology different sociology in this sense is not a practice it is rather an attempt to understand society and to go to the root cause of that problem and how that problem kind of affected people in different society in different period of time and that is how a sociologist is kind of trying to make an attempt to understand and observe human behavior outside the context of a social setting free from whatever influences a sociologist personal bias or feeling might be so he is here categorically saying that sociologist might have several values prejudices and personal biases but when he is doing his work as a sociologist he or she needs to keep away his prejudice bias and do research in an objective manner does not allow the personal bias to influence the finding of his research sociologist even if their values vary because every sociologist would belong to a different community to a different religious group to another any kind of ideological group so there cannot be a homogeneous value that identifies with sociologist there can be multiple or various values but what is common in all sociologist is that they have to have scientific integrity sociologist are only humans and still deal with things as convictions emotions prejudices but being trained in sociology they should be able to learn to control these values 
and try to eliminate Froem from their work. So, when he is trying to see that we kind of do sociological research from an objective lens, we study reality not with our prejudice and biases, but as a reality which is kind of independent of individuals. So, when he tells us that sociology is a form of consciousness, he gives us four motives of sociological consciousness. Number one, debunking motive. Number two, unrespectability motive. Number three, relativization motive. And number four, cosmopolitan motive. The debunking motive looks beyond the surface understanding of social reality. It says looking beyond what is presented, seeing through what is presented, mistrust of apparently obvious and unmasking the surface appearance. So, sociologists and those using sociological thought process unmask the social process that they observe. The debunking motive is the tendency not due to psych of the sociologist, but it is a part of the methodology necessary to employ this type disregard of the disposition or assumption. The unrespectability motive, Berger suggests that there are two distinct sectors that can be seen across people, places and community, respectable and unrespectable. Anyone or thing aligning with typical middle or upper class ideas, language, jobs and culture is seen as respectable. Anything from those which is considered beyond the average is considered as unrespectable. Unrespectable includes large group of people falling below poverty line, entire community and certain profession. Sociologists deal with unrespectability and how do they deal? They have awareness of other than middle class standards, not accepts the division between the respectable as imposed value in simple the sociologist needs to go beyond the respectable in order to get a clear picture. The third is real relativization. It is the idea that there are certain rules which are constructed universally, but then it is a relativity. It would differ from time to time, space to space and society to society. Now, what does a sociologist do? They try to consider accompanying social reality by understanding relativity that everything is relative. It is going to have an alternate way of looking at the world. And how do they do this? They have truth of one group is never absolute. We need to look at perspective and belief of the different, need to gain insight through examining other culture. The sociologist can disagree with the core belief that the society promotes as meaningful. The last motive is cosmopolitan motive and that is a consciousness developed within the ancient town as culture inventions and new ideas. A cosmopolitan way of thinking complements other three motive as motive encourages further debunking, merging into the unrespectable sector and understanding of relative meaning. The cosmopolitan me motive for sociologist implies like C. Wright Mills sociologists transcend the particular society, be open to others way of thinking without being prejudiced, transcending where one is and taking wider world view. Being at home where other people are, if it is human, it is not alien to the sociologist. So, by looking at these understanding of sociology as an invitation 
to an intellectual world of social science, we try to understand Peter Berger's contribution to sociology. With this, I come to an end of today's lecture. Thank you.